This is a vote buying issue. And they think that if somehow they go in and pay off people's student loans who made these loans on their own, who knew doggone well what they were doing when they made them, and in the course of it are gonna end up with a college degree, already have one in fact, and are gonna make more money than the people who couldn't afford to go to college, what this really represents is a transfer of wealth from the wealthier to the less wealthy, from the better educated to the less educated. Governor Mike Huckabee, he joins us now. Governor, good to see you. Well, thank you. I, I sometimes feel like maybe I'm bringing even more doubt to the uh, platform, <laughs> but I sure hope not. <laughs> I, I've never seen that to date. Maybe this will be a first, but I doubt it. Governor, on all seriousness, we are facing a catastrophic uh, storm. All eyes are on Governor DeSantis at this point. Take me into the head of a governor facing a natural catastrophe like this. What's it like? Well, the good news about a hurricane is that you do have several days to begin anticipating and preparing for it. And Florida governors understand that of all the things they've got to be prepared for, nothing is more important than being prepared for a hurricane. It's very obvious that Governor DeSantis is surrounding himself with good, competent emergency management people. They have done everything that you need to do in preparation for something like this. But having said that, let me say you can never fully and adequately prepare for something you cannot control. And when a hurricane hits, it can go from a Cat 3 to a Cat 5 uh, almost within a matter of hours. That's what happened with Michael. And I was living on the uh, Panhandle shore when that one hit, and everyone was thinking, well, it'll be a, maybe an upper two, a three, and it ended up being a five. This one is already right on the verge of five. Here's some things that the governor has to do in the midst of this. I, I would say there are four basic areas uh, for preparation. The first one, put a focus on people. Number one goal, saving human lives, protecting human lives, getting those people out of the way of the hurricane, begging them uh, to evacuate. A lot of people won't, don't want to evacuate, but that's the job one, people. Second job, pathway. What is the path out of the hurricane zone? And this is where the uh, Department of Transportation people go into full gear, putting all of the uh, routes uh, northward or eastward, getting them out of the way and clearing as much uh, pathway as possible. The third, uh, restoring power, knowing that you're going to lose a bunch of it and how fast can you restore it. There were power crews that were already on their way from several days ago from multiple states headed to Florida, staged and parked and ready so that as soon as this hurricane passes, there will be power crews from across America who will be working to get Florida's power restored. And the fourth thing is property. Of all the things that matter, property is the least uh, because property can be replaced uh, but there is a desire to protect property, not only before the hurricane, but after it hits, then law enforcement steps in to protect it from being vandalized and looted. Let me say this, Florida is very fortunate that it has taken steps, particularly since 1992 and Hurricane Andrew, to up dramatically the building code requirements so that the likelihood of structural damage is significantly less than it would have been 30 years ago, even 10 years ago, and any new construction built within the past 15 to 20 years is going to meet or exceed Dade County Code, which is the most stringent hurricane-resistant code in the world. All of those are very critical things, and the governor's on top of it, and he clearly has a, uh, a good team around him. Boy, what, uh, what great points. All that said, there are a couple of factors which uh, remain uh, unknown at this point. Uh, one is, is the fact that we are still dealing with a lot of supply chain problems in this country and a lot of people not going back to work. So I wonder if that's going to exacerbate the problems with the recovery. And then the second factor is that uh, Governor DeSantis is a presumed presidential candidate in the year 2024. He's up for re-election in just a little less than a month now. The long knives from the other party are going to come out for him regarding his response to this hurricane, no matter how successful he is. Yeah, there's really nothing more disgusting than using uh, the very 
essence of a hurricane for political purposes, and I think people who do that uh, are despicable. And it doesn't matter whether a person is going against a Democrat governor or president or a Republican president or governor. I, I was one who praised Bill Clinton as president for managing disasters very, very effectively. He had done it as a governor. He had that experience. He took it to the White House with him, and he did that very, very well. Uh, I'll be honest with you, George W. Bush, who had been a governor but never faced the kind of natural disasters, uh, frankly, he did not manage Katrina very well. And I'll be the first Republican to say that there were things that were done in that. Uh, my state was directly impacted with 75,000 evacuees directly from New Orleans. And we were appalled by the lack of coordination from the federal government to the point that we just started doing it the way we knew it needed to be done and not waiting on permission from Washington. This should never be politicized. The focus ought to be on how to protect people and property the best way you can. There are three stages in the aftermath. First is rescue. Are there people who are stranded and can you get to them and rescue them? If you can, obviously that's number one. There comes a point which there's no longer a rescue option. Then it's a matter of recovery. And the third, and I'm keeping my alliteration going because it's easier to remember, and the third is the actual restoration where you go back and you rebuild uh, and you fix the things that are broken and you rebuild the things that are destroyed. What you mentioned before, Doug, is very important for people to understand. It will take longer for the restoration process for the simple reason that you won't be able to just go to the lumber yard and pick up everything you need. You'll be waiting on it to come from ships and uh, places from around the world. Another great reminder that America should not be outsourcing manufacturing of its most needed goods. You state it so well. Uh, there's another story I want to get to before we let you go, and that is that the, the Congressional Budget Office has now come out with this estimation of what President Biden's student loan bailout is going to cost Americans. Their tab, $400 billion, another mammoth. In fact, they, they call it, or, or some people are calling it now, the largest expense of a, uh, through an executive order in, in American history. Uh, your reaction to this, are you surprised by the tally, and what do you make of it? I think it could even be higher. And uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, the former mayor of Atlanta who failed at that job and then was uh, uh, upwardly moved to the White House, which is uh, frankly hard to understand, she was on television yesterday admitting they have no idea how much it's ultimately going to cost. They don't know. They don't even know the process to do it. But they're determined to do it because they think it can buy them votes. Let's not kid ourselves. This is a vote buying issue. And they think that if somehow they go in and pay off people's student loans who made these loans on their own, who knew doggone well what they were doing when they made them, and in the course of it are going to end up with a college degree, already have one in fact, and are going to make more money than the people who couldn't afford to go to college, what this really represents is a transfer of wealth from the wealthier to the less wealthy from the better educated to the less educated. You're taking wealth from people who worked hard to get it, the less wealthy, and you're turning around and giving it to the wealthier people. This is Robin Hood in reverse, and I don't know how in the world the Biden administration possibly thinks that this makes any economic sense, but I also believe it may backfire them, uh, backfire on them because a lot of people understand this is blatantly unfair to tell the plumber, electrician, the brick mason, hey, you're going to have to cough up money out of your taxes to pay for those people that went to college when you couldn't, who took out a loan, but while you're paying off your truck and you're paying off your tools, they're going to be getting their loans wiped off by Joe Biden. Hi, I'm Doug McKelway, and thank you for watching Centerpoint. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Leave a comment below and keep the conversation going by sharing this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.